I think that no discussion on ethics can be complete without <coughs> talking about philosophy because ethics is a part of philosophy. Philosophy is thinking about man's deepest problems and issues, including those related to the physical world. Over the years, over the millennia, we've answered those physical problems, questions, and we've relegated them to physics. That's what we call physics now. The rest that we can't answer with empirical knowledge and experimentation, we call philosophy. A central part of philosophy is ethics. What is ethics? How do we live? What are we to do? How are we to do it? Ever since man organized himself, herself, into communal groups, he, she has needed ethics to regulate society, to regulate the community, to promote the welfare of the community and to keep the peace. Without ethics, none of this is possible. I would like to think that ethics are universal. We respect human rights, we value honesty, we abhor corruption and so forth. But we have to admit that in practice, ethics vary from society to society and from age to age, era to era. Do we respect human rights in Pakistan? Yes and no. Do we value honesty in Pakistan? Yes and no. Don't we see scrupulously honest people as some kind of losers? We do. Aren't we also resigned to the practice of dishonesty in our lives? We are. And the same goes for corruption. We are not scandalized, sadly, by corruption. In fact, we accept it and we expect it as a measure of modern life in Pakistan. So do ethics then really matter to us here living in Pakistan in 2018? Of course they do. And of course they must. Because if we want to lift ourselves from near failure and become a better country, we have to first be a better society. So we have to be more ethical. If you want to have a prosperous economy, you have to be more law-abiding. In order to be law-abiding, you have to be more ethical. And I would argue that ethics is essential for economic growth in this globalized world where we are all interconnected. The superior ethical standards and practices of successful economies with which we need to trade, from whom we need to borrow, must apply to us as well if we are to be a successful economy. Our neighbors would not have been able to improve their rates of growth if they hadn't invested in education. Better education for more and more of the population is good for the country. But to begin with, for the country's planners, it is an ethical decision. Every child deserves a decent education. That is an ethical standard of universal human conduct. Similarly with human rights, an ethical decision that leads to greater national cohesion it leads to a happier, less violent society. And we've seen violence on the streets in the very recent past. We see the negative impact of corruption on our economy. Public trust is in short supply. People do not save. They don't plan ahead. They don't invest in the future. And so the acceptance of corruption and the lack of ethical thinking eats away at our savings, at our growth rate, and ultimately at our economic success. Now I want to say something personal. As a journalist of 30 years experience in print and broadcast, I have seen and experienced a rise and fall in media ethics. As journalists, we constantly strive for more autonomy, for more space. That struggle is based on the ethical premise that freedom of expression is an inalienable right belonging to all of us. 
In my experience, ladies and gentlemen, there has never been more censorship. I'm talking of the last 30 years that I've been a working journalist than now. Never. This is the most censored era in which we are living. And we practice self-censorship because we are afraid. Not even during General Musharraf's martial law was there so much censorship. Don't believe what you see on television. Don't believe what you read in the newspapers. We are self-censoring ourselves. And if you think that that is because of a lack of ethical behavior, you're right. But then I think that we should take a longer view and in our enlightened self-interest, we should expand the space of expression, of freedom of expression, so that we journalists then rise to the standard that we expect of ourselves and that the world expects of us. But more than perhaps all of this is the most pressing ethical challenge facing us today as a global world, and that is climate change. There is no clearer, stronger argument for the importance of ethics than the relationship between ethical living and sustainable life on Earth. If we do not change our eating habits, our living habits, if we don't lessen the intake of meat, a byproduct of this would be the prevention of cruelty to mass farmed animals, the threat to life on Earth will continue to grow. If we do not grow more trees, if we do not prevent illegal logging, the threat to life on Earth will continue to grow. If we do not invest in clean fuels, if we do not save and share and care, these are all ethical requirements. We will make this earthly paradise a hell. And if this is not enough of an argument for the observance of global ethics, I don't know what is. Thank you for your time.